let's play our, our game again like we did the last time. Now it's fourth down, eight yards to go. You're in enemy territory, you're down by two touchdowns. Gotta have a first down here, no matter what. Last time you said, how about uh, done up the middle, and they went to the air to Brian Taylor on, on the sideline for a completion. I'm going to take the easy way out. They're going to go to the air again. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't, I don't see why not. Norristown really, as we saw in the first half, has, has uh, figured out that play with Dunn, the little counter that they run. Um, they're, they're going to go to the air. It's just that they've been unsuccessful with Thackeray rolling out as he rolls right along the line of scrimmage and into defenders. And I think you're going to see Norristown coming with all guns into the backfield. Thackeray rolls to the left across his body. He tucks the ball up. He's going to get a first down. Unbelievable. He's finally wrapped up by Brahim Mitchell in the backfield, along with number 40, Eric Stead. Well, Thackeray rolls out there, but more and more it's looking like he's rolling out, not with the intention of throwing, but with the intention of letting the defense re uh, not relax but stretch a bit uh, so that he can get some running room. Does that technically count as you being wrong since he did not pass the ball? <laughs> Well, I don't, I don't think they're put this way. I don't think their plan was to roll out and have Thackeray take it for 10. And if it was, it was a darn good call. First and 10 from the 25. They go up the middle to Bernhardt. He picks up a good six yards on the carry. And that's the one thing that Narsan hasn't figured out yet is that quick hitter to Bernhardt as he goes mostly off the left side. We have Dean Moore now down on the field. Coming onto the field, number 33, James Kelly, and Moore is really writhing around in there. It looks like it might be cramps, though. Well, it's certainly human enough that you would uh, lose a lot of fluid tonight. It's a bit chilly, but those guys probably don't know that right now. And while fortunately for the players uh, and for the fans here at Roosevelt Field, the rain has really held off since the game has begun, but it did rain rather steadily all day long. The field certainly has to be wet, but I agree with your comment of earlier tonight that the folks who, uh, who take care of this field have done a fine job because the, the field does look to be in fairly good condition. And the rain's held off, and that's contributed to a little bit of the increase in the crowd size, and that's always nice to see. Yeah, certainly not the uh, the level of interest that we saw in a, a beautiful early uh, late summer night against the uh, the state champion uh, Bucks. Pardon me, not well state champions at some point in their history, but not last year. Well, Eastern Eastern uh, Pennsylvania. Actually, champions. they were state finalists last year. There you so go. I like that uh, state finalists. <laughs> almost as good. I'm sure they wouldn't tell you that, but. And those Bucks certainly look like they can make another run at it this year. They have all kinds of weapons. Uh, we saw Bill Lowe here rack up over 200 yards in rushing. Uh, the next day they come out, the next week they come out, and their quarterback, Ben Snyder, throws for about 175 yards passing. So they can certainly do it all. And uh, as we saw, our good defensive team, Narth Narstown, just had a tremendous offense working that night. Well, it's a little bit early to begin thinking about playoffs for Narstown yet, but I know that Roger Grove and his squad would like another shot at those Bucks. Uh, certainly their, uh, their win against the Bucks last year seemed to be the impetus for a fantastic season, and Narstown fell on a little bit of hard luck here at home, uh, running into some real good football teams and they weren't able to convert that win into any type of a title or championship. But this year might be a different story. Second and four. Second and four is the play. Looks almost like a busted play. Looks like Taylor wound up with the ball while he was wrapped up on the inside that time by Jeff Fiss. And the way that play developed, I think it might have been a busted play. Well, if it was, if it was they made certainly made something good out of it. Uh, Taylor was in the right position to take that ball and explode through the hole. And the Narstown defenders, a, a good job of not buying the bust and really staying at home. It's now going to be third and three from the Narstown 18-yard line. Once again, Staples is wide to the right. Thackeray takes a look. Dunn comes in motion. There's a penalty. Yeah, they all jumped. They wanted to get the jump on Narstown there. And uh, again, it was motion. A lot of guys, a lot of guys moving. It's a decoy. Yep, there it is. So illegal procedure again against uh, the Patriots. And Walt, there haven't been many penalties in this game, and and nothing more than a holding penalty as far as yardage is concerned. But I'll tell you, there there have been some key spots where the Patriots have taken some small penalties that have really hurt them. That's for sure. They they've let Narsen off the hook a couple of times, and they certainly put themselves into some bad situations. But again, that's that offense they're running, which at this level is fairly complicated. And you have decoys, and you have 
men in motion and you have guys who are, you know, are going to get the ball and look like they're going to get the ball. And it's certainly tough. Everybody out left. There's a man short who's wide open. Thackeray oh. finds Staples on the far sideline. It's going to be very close to a first down. Are you kidding me? Lamont Johnson just made a tremendous tackle. Uh, as you saw over there, the official dropped the stick so that there would be no injuries. But Staples looking like he had an easy first down. All he had to do was turn to the first down marker. And Lamont Johnson just wrapped him up and just rode him out of bounds before he could take another step. And that time, the Patriots had two receivers left in the pattern. Thackeray dropped off, or pardon me, Thackeray dropped off to Staples, who fell out of the pattern there very short. It was a good, well-run play, but as you say, Johnson prevented the first down, and now you have fourth and less than a yard from just inside the 15-yard line. And the Patriots don't get this. Remember that tackle by Lamont Johnson. Ten minutes to play, folks. The Eagles up 14 to nothing. Fourth and less than a yard. Thackeray, a long count, trying to get the Eagles to jump. They don't. They're the give up the middle to Bernhardt, and it looks like a first down for the Patriots. And that's obviously something that they are not comfortable doing, is just plunging ahead for short yardage. They may have executed well enough to get that first down, but they did not get much more than that yard. So first down for the Patriots. They're going to have the opportunity for one more first down at about the three-yard line. Let's call it uh, first and 10 from the 13 of Norristown. Narstown's going to have to work fast to get this man off the field. Tom McKernan does manage to get off before the snap. They go up the middle again. Touchdown! Bernhardt, 14 yards on the carry. And I'll tell you what, Walt, that's good blocking that time by the line for the Patriots. So that play hasn't been stopped much by the Eagles tonight. And again, they got even better yardage that time. Uh, they have not gotten the hang of that play with Bernhardt busting off the left side. And a real good call down tight there, knowing that that's been the play, getting them some yardage. He's certainly with plenty of time to even this game or win it. But they knew they wanted a touchdown right away, right there, and they got it. East has to scramble here to get enough men on the field for the point after touchdown. Chris Becker, it's blocked! Oh boy, Braheen Mitchell off the left side. And I'll tell you what, there's a big play. Yeah, if the, if the Eagles shouldn't score and the Patriots should get another touchdown, they would be then forced to go for two points, and that is a situation you do not want to be in. You know, and i tell you what I think part of that, Walt, was brought on by the fact that it looked like um, East didn't have the right setup on the field. They had to rush to get a man into the interior line, snapped quickly, and Brahim Mitchell was left unattended. Yeah, they, they were a bit disorganized, and you can bet that the Eagle, uh, the, the Eagle special teams on that play realized that. And saw that they had a big opportunity to make an important play. And Mitchell, that was not a close deflection. Mitchell had that ball buried in his stomach <laughs> as he just smothered that kick. <laughs> Brahim Mitchell must not be too shaken up as he's back deep to return this kickoff. I tell you, it was a nice sustained drive that time by the Patriots. They really mixed the plays up, um, executed when they had to on uh, on fourth down. I was that was a very impressive drive when you're down 14 to nothing. Well, that that it really is. They really show that they keep their composure. Uh, but you're not going to see some Damon Carroll runs from their offense. That's going to be their offense, and you just saw it work. Becker's kick is low again. Fumbled. Narstown should fall on it. They don't, and he is wrapped up. That time it's number 89, Al Zone. He was the up man on one of the, the other uh, kickoffs from, uh, from the Patriots. But Zone does a good job, picks it up, runs laterally, and uh, he's, he's wrapped up. And he's uh, getting a few words about that on the sidelines. That um, I'm sure that they're, they're, they're happy about the way he handled the ball, but possibly maybe not about running back the way he did. Well, the Eagles here, their task certainly is to sustain their own drive here and put another score up on the board uh, to make the Patriots' task a bit tougher. Nine minutes to play. The Eagles with relatively good field position at their own 29-yard line. Backs in the eye. Galliano goes to Carroll. Carroll busts through, spins. He's still going. Damon Carroll bulls his way for nine yards. Yeah, there's the other facet of Damon Carroll's game, and that's power. Uh, when you send him straight up the middle, People are going to bounce off him occasionally. And, uh, he's got the spin moves and everything working in there. 
Good, good leg movement. Again, he's one another, another one of those Narstown backs that is just not easy to bring down, and you're not going to see one man bring him down. And of course, Damon Carroll, folks, is only a junior. He'll be back next year. That's got to put a little fear into some of these uh, Suburban One coaches. Galliano hands off to Butler. Butler pushes ahead. He's got the first down across the 40-yard line. And you know, if you could count the yardage that Jeff Butler gets after he's uh, first contacted by a defender, uh, he would. If you could only count that, he'd probably lead this conference in rushing. Uh, just, just incredible power with which he runs. And the Eagles quickly with a first down. They've now got uh, excellent field position here at their own 42-yard line. Galliano hands off up the middle again. This time doesn't go for much. Butler that time only picked up a yard, maybe two on the play. Walt, after uh, two times with Jeff Butler up the middle, I wouldn't be surprised to see a little option here. Maybe Damon Carroll give him an opportunity to go wide to the near side of the field here. Second down's a, a real good time to do that, and we've seen Narstown do it on second down many times. Here comes Damon. Straight handoff to him. He's got a big hole. Damon Carroll, oh boy, I don't know how he kept his balance, but he did. And gives it enough time, though, for the Patriot defender. That time, number 10, Brian Thackray, to come up and bring Carroll down. But my goodness, did you see that, that agility and that balance by Damon Carroll? You don't know how. How do you think that Patriot defender feels? Uh, sure that he had him tripped up and Carroll on his way down. Just held himself, kept his composure, and uh, was able to gain 10 or 15 more yards. But Jeff, a real good call. Uh, Narstown was keeping it a little bit slower and steadier with Jeff Butler. And that time, Carroll sweeping around, uh, received the ball about five yards deep into the backfield. And before anyone knew it, it exploded into the defensive backfield and was on his way to a big game. And give some credit to the left side of that Narstown line. There was a huge hole there opened up. Excellent job by the line tonight. Well, let me tell you something. Sean Dunn for the Patriots while having a good night on offense has really been having some trouble on defense. Uh, he's just coming out with air every time, he, every time he tries to tackle a Narstown player. He was the one who had rushed in on Carroll's long touchdown run only to be blown past, and that time Carroll just stepped right over him. The Eagles putting the shift on here. Look at this play, and they called timeout. <laughs> I don't know what the heck that was, Walt, but all the Narstown linemen went to the right side of the ball, and Phil Galliano said, no, I don't think so. <laughs> it was as if they were listening to my confused rundown of the line at the beginning. This guy's the guard, no, that guy's the tackle. And uh, certainly a bit of confusion. Galliano not wanting to make any mistakes in that situation, wisely called the timeout. And we have 6.43 to play in this ball game. Narstown up on top, 14 to six. If you joined us late, the first half was scoreless. Narstown uh, charging out of the locker room, put two touchdowns onto the board in the third quarter on some big plays by the Eagles. The two strikes were a 47-yard run by Damon Carroll and a 17-yard pass completion from Galliano to Brahim Mitchell. The Patriots were able to drive back down in this fourth quarter, add a touchdown of their own, but a Brahim Mitchell block of the point after touchdown leaves us where we are now at 14-6 Norristown. Folks, if you've been looking down at, uh, at the field here tonight, watching the screen, you might have seen some haze or some almost some fog or some mist around the players. That's the humidity out there. That's the breath of these players uh, showing in the field. When they go into the huddle, it's almost like a cloud around them. It's humid, but it feels like about mid-50 degrees, so you're going to see some, some steam. Galliano. This time, hands up the middle to Butler and nothing doing. Yeah, that one never developed. Uh, by the time Butler got the ball, he had three guys surrounding him and had no time to get started, and hence no nothing, no sort of momentum to break any tackles. 
At that time, there was no sell, and, and Jeff Butler paid the price. Lost a yard on the carry. It's going to be second and 11 from just about the 40-yard line of Central Bucks East. But good news for the Eagles, the clock continues to run. We're just above six minutes to play in this ball game here at Narstown's Roosevelt Field. Galliano, the Narstown players seem a little bit confused out there. You hate to see Galliano burn another time out here. He does not. Mitchell comes in motion. Looks like the set we saw when Raheem Mitchell turned it upfield. Mitchell, good job that time. Nice little pattern. Takes the ball to the far sideline. Picked up about eight or nine on the play. A real good delivery by Galliano. We see that when Galliano has a man open and the play works, he can deliver the ball with, with extreme, extreme accuracy. Well, that time he did a good job of leading Brahim Mitchell, who was still on a dead run when he, when he brought the ball in. And we picked up, let's say, eight yards on the play, leaving us with third and three. Yeah, and that's the kind of plays Narstown wants through the air. They want everything to be clean and accurate. Uh, they don't want to take too many chances through the air because the short game works so well. I think you'll see Eagles stay on the ground. Galliano fumbles the snap, keeps it himself, breaks into the secondary, beats a man almost down to the end zone inside the 10-yard line. Boy, I'll tell you, Phil Galliano leaves a charmed life. He drops the snap, picks the ball up, goes around the left side untouched for 30 yards. The old fumble Ruski, the old Nebraska <laughs> play, uh, except that time Galliano took it himself instead of leaving it for his center, Dave Fazzini. Um, you'll see, often see those busted plays work, but the players have to have the composure to make that play work. I'm not saying it was planned, don't get me wrong, but uh, the players have to have the composure to keep their head and uh, realize that something can be made out of plays like that, and Galliano certainly has that sort of intelligence. It's first and goal now from the six-yard line. Galliano to Carroll. Carroll up the middle, and he is stacked up nicely that time by the interior of the Patriot defensive line. Yeah, that's the way to do it, is explode through that hole and wrap up Carroll's legs before he gets a chance to, to get them going. And when those Narstown running plays are stopped for short yardage, it's those CB East linebackers who are really blasting through the holes that their linemen are creating. And short tacklers they have back there in the middle of their defense. Let's call it one yard on the carry. It's now second and goal from the five yard line. The back split, Butler and Carroll. They go to Carroll around the left side. Carroll, touchdown! Damon Carroll, five yards, picks his way into the end zone. His second score of the night, and the Eagles now up on top, 20-6, to six, and Steve Davis will come on to try and make it 21. Yeah, Damon Carroll doesn't need much room, and that little counter to Butler was enough to get him free. On the solid left side of the, left side of the Narstown offense, blew open a hole, and Carroll slipped through for his second of the night. Galliano will hold. Davis will be the kicker. Good snap. The kick is up, and it is good. No, no good. Wide, wide to the near side, wide to the left that time for Davis. Boy, he had a lot on it. Looked good from our perspective, but of course our perspective is terrible. So. <laughs> Well, Steve Davis coming into this game, third in the league in kick scoring at 12 points. He's put a couple field goals on the board, including that first one against the Bucks of Central Bucks West, and six extra points this year. And Damon Carroll now, coming into the game with 32 points, has added 12 up to 44, seven touchdowns on the year. Damon Carroll is quite an impressive ball player, especially when you consider his junior status. That he'll be back for Roger Grove next year must have Roger smiling from ear to ear. And the task now for the Patriots is a daunting one. With 4.03 to play in this game, they are down by 14 points. Of course, they did equalize that, uh, that blocked extra point there, but um, the fact that they don't have that big play offense, Walt, is really going to be a hindrance to them. Not too much time to churn out many big drives here. Steve Davis has kicked the ball well tonight. He does it once again. This time it falls in front of Carabin. He takes the ball at about the 38-yard line, breaks one tackle, and that's what you don't want to have happen. Seemed like Carabin almost cut back to, to the defenders uh, he, that he, time. Uh, it's, you certainly can't say anything unless you're on that field uh, looking at what he's looking at, but he certainly has made some suspicious moves tonight. Um, but that's what happens when maybe you don't have the speed to get to the outside. 
It looked like he could have busted it out to the outside, but Carabin uses his blockers well. Uh, that's just not often the kind of guy you want returning your kicks. Running the ball is fine, uh, but returning your kicks, you want the game breaker, and possibly the Patriots don't have that. And now we've got two receivers out. Fumble ball, Norristown's got it. And that, folks, is going to be the icing on the cake. Brian Thackray just dropped the ball on the snap, and it's number 54, Ra Ra Lusain, who comes up with the play. Well, you know, the Patriots have to know that they needed some big plays if they were going to even have a shot. Um, and they're just not comfortable doing that. And with 3.33 to play in this ball game, the Eagles will put this game on ice here. That's a big defensive play by the Eagles, and uh, Lusain is, uh, is also a player whose presence is felt out there. He is uh, he's a, uh, a fine young ball player. Sure, Norristown has a great rotation of about four linebackers that they can run in and out of there. Um, and they're all quick and quick to the ball. Interesting offensive set here. Look at this, Galliano is in. Well, there, nobody touched that defender. That was number 56. LaCoya right. it was in the backfield before Phil Galliano even had a chance to turn around. Yeah, he's going to come over and say, uh, what happened there, coach? <laughs> At that time, I, I found the uh, the set very interesting. I mean, it was, it was a passing set. They had number 21 for the Eagles. That's Joe Milligan was wide left along with Mitchell. They brought Carroll in motion. And uh, Galliano uh, seemed to let that play uh, evolve behind him, and, and the defender was right there. And Norristown, especially Galliano, has shown the ability this year to make something of some busted plays with pitches. Galliano that time wisely, not liking to do anything foolish, uh, just held on to the ball and went down. So it's second and 14. They hand off to Carroll. Carroll digs his way off the left side. Still not down. Wow. Yeah, he's the big play guy, but he's also a horse. And uh, they certainly are not afraid to go to him when, they, when the game is not quite on the line, but when they need to put it away. And Damon Carroll is certainly a great guy to look to. And a timeout called now by Central Bucks East. They really have little choice at this point. It's going to be third and eight for Norristown. The ball's at about the 24-yard 20, line of Central Bucks East. The Eagles, of course, will keep it on the ground. Um, and certainly Norristown has the capability to churn out a first down here. They'll run it two more times. Well, we've seen Norristown do a lot of things tonight, and I, they've certainly, uh, after a scoreless first half, stayed steady and true to their game. And that's the influence of the steady and coaching staff. Um, Roger Grove really heading a good team this year. He's got longtime assistant Brian Kennedy working with him, as long as Rowan Watson, James Cassidy, Ernie Smith, Nick Rotunda Jr., Darian Smith, Carl Schrader, and Anthony Cicchino as well as some other former players, such as uh, Frank Cassano, working with him. Um, just, just a great staff and an assembly of players who played all different positions and have had all different experiences. Uh, and that really shows on this Narstown team that every area of their team is so well coached. It's now on third and eight. Galliano takes a look. He hands off. No, he looks to the air. I can't believe it. He's got Eric Stead open. Oh, it bounces off his shoulder pad. I can't believe that call. Well, I can't believe that call. I'm sure Galliano had instructions to not make do anything foolish. Um, and if there's nothing there, throw it away or keep it and run it yourself. He saw Stead up there, and all he had to do was just loft it up. In fact, that's exactly what he did. Uh, Stead got a little turned around, though. I, I, think, I don't think there was a problem with the delivery. Uh, Stead just got himself turned around a bit. And that led to uh, just the ball bouncing off him. And Stead was three yards deep into the secondary beyond the nearest defender. He just blew by the coverage. Certainly the Patriots weren't looking for that play either. And now it's going to be fourth down, and they're going to go for a long field goal. I don't believe this. That ball's going to be spotted at the 32-yard line. Davis is up, and that's way short. Boy, I'll tell you, they try for the field goal of uh, 42 yards on fourth down and seven with 155 to play. And Walt, I don't understand either of those calls. <laughs> well, uh, I, I can't explain them to you just a, a, in a, from a football standpoint. I think it's just Roger Grove being a player's coach and, uh, and letting his kids play. And one more touchdown is not going to be running up the score in this game. Um, in fact, it's making sure you put it away. Certainly two minutes. Uh, even though we've been talking about the Patriot offense as being a real steady offense, two minutes is, is enough time for a disaster to happen. 
Thackeray has the ball back, and he runs his way into a sack, and he is wrapped up in the backfield. Eric Stan and Ra Ra Lusane. And Jeff, if you don't want to understand something tonight, uh, not don't understand how Brian Thackeray is rolling into the Narstown defensive line. Obviously, his blockers are not pushing them back. They're doing what they have to do, and that's holding them off. Uh, they're not comfortable, obviously, dropping back into the pocket, but he's rolling right into the line. Thackeray back to pass again. He just lofts it up. That's going to be intercepted, almost intercepted, by Omar Jenkins, number one. Staples was the intended receiver. We've got 124 to play. It's going to be third down and 17 from the 12-yard line of East. And what I guess, I mean, I'm saying I don't understand what Roger Grove's play selection with going deep for the touchdown and then the field goal, the 42-yarder by Davis. I guess what it, what it amounts to is a confidence in his defense. I mean, knowing that he's got a team on the other side of the ball that's not explosive, he's got a sound defensive team, he's up by 14 points, there's only two minutes to play. I guess I'm thinking play conservative, eat the ball, run off more time on the clock. But you're right, he gave, he gave his kids a chance to do something. They hand off the ball inside that time to Carabin, and he picks up four or five, but I, I don't understand that play either. Well, well back, to, back to the Narstown calls. Um, I think, of course, on a major college level or a pro level, those aren't the calls you're going to make. And you're not going to let a guy who uh, has an accurate leg, but maybe not the 42-yarder, uh, you're not going to let him kick that field goal. There's a chance of it being blocked and run back. But uh, in that case, I think Roger Grove just realized that this game is well in hand. And there's a concession by Central Bucks East. They punt the ball on fourth down, and I think we're going to wrap this game up and go into the locker room. This whole and, thing's just a weird succession. Well, that's a white flag by John Quinn. I mean, the white flag was actually on third down, on third and 17, when he elected to run the ball into the interior of the line. On fourth down, he punts with uh, a minute left to play. So the Eagles will take possession, and... I think most certainly now all they will do is snap the ball and bend down on one knee with only 46 seconds to play and a 14-point lead. Forty-six seconds. They give it off to Jeff Butler. Butler up the middle for about five yards. And we'll see if East even bothers to call uh, call a timeout. I don't think that they will. And we'll probably just see one more play here tonight as the Eagles wrap up a solid victory. But a victory that certainly was not decided until halfway through this fourth quarter. No, it was well earned. And the Eagles, no mistakes tonight. Uh, they, just, they just played their game and wore out the Patriots of Central Bucks East. That's what they knew they could do coming in, and that's exactly what they did. And this will be the last play of the game as we wind down to 10 seconds remaining. Phil Galliano takes the ball, sits down, actually. Yeah, not quite taking a knee, but just as effective. <laughs> Any part of the body will do. That's right. And the clock ticks off the final second, and you hear the crowd cheering this 20-6 victory by their hometown Eagles. And Norristown improves its record to 3-1 in conference play. And a solid victory tonight by Roger Grove and his Eagles. Walt and I will be back in just a moment to recap this game for you. The final score here at Roosevelt Field, 20 to 6, Narstown winds up on top. And Walt, this game seemed a little slow paced there the first, uh, first two quarters, but the Eagles really came out fired up in that third quarter. The, yeah, certainly the Eagles are, are really a, a solid team when it comes to playing teams that are maybe on their level or a little bit lesser. Um, they're not going to come out and blow people away, but they came out of that third in that third quarter really knowing, look, fellas, we're the better team here, and we have to show it. They came out, and they uh, really put the game away. I tell you, I think perhaps part of the problem here tonight for Narstown's offense, their inability to get on track early in the game, was a need to protect the ball, and they did a great job at that. I mean, the, the field conditions were not excellent simply due to the weather. It was wet all day long. The field was wet. We saw several dropped exchanges on uh, between Phil Galliano and, and, and Dave Fazzini, but the Eagles did not turn the ball over a single time tonight, whereas the, their counterparts had several problems. No, again, and that, that's a great mix for a team to have. Uh, they have the big playability, but often with that big playability comes the turnovers. Uh, Narstown does, just does not turn the ball over. That's why they're always a favorite to win in any game they go into. 
Well, the Eagles did a good job here tonight. Of course, we had a scoreless first half of play, and the Eagles on that first possession of the third quarter um, saw a big play, a game breaker from Damon Carroll, a 47-yard carry for a touchdown. Steve Davis adds the extra point, and the Eagles are, uh, are quickly up on top. Well, Jeff, Damon Carroll's the kind of back that uh, you leave high school five, ten years later, you say, I went to school, I saw Damon Carroll play. Uh, he is that good and he is that electrifying. Um, and certainly, again, we saw Phil Galliano so good at handling the ball. Uh, as he ran down the line, hid that ball, and uh, made the CB East players bite the fake. And then once he tossed it out to Carroll, really, that was probably the easiest touchdown Damon Carroll will ever score. And certainly on that next defensive series for the Eagles, Jeff Butler asserted himself as the captain of that defense. He put a couple sticks on players that they're going to remember for the next four or five weeks. Yeah, well, uh, he's the leader, and they know he's the leader, and he knows he's the leader. Everybody knows it. Uh, and he certainly did assert himself, putting a couple sticks right in the middle of the line, one snapping the man's head back, uh, the other one where he just ran a guy, ran him down, and kept him off the ball. Um, so... Butler is going to be the leader on defense. This team is going to shut people down and allow that offense to get some points. And that allowed the Eagles to take possession a uh, second time in the third quarter, and they didn't disappoint on that possession either. They culminated a uh, good drive with a 17-yard uh, pass completion from Phil Galliano to Brahim Mitchell. Uh, really a, a well-run plan to put the Eagles up on top with Davis's extra point, 14 to nothing. Well, the Eagles came out, and they obviously have more weapons than the Patriots. Uh, they have more weapons than, in fact, a lot of teams that they're going to play. Uh, Mitchell is one of those weapons. He's one of those big-time game-breaker type people. Uh, they went right to him. They, they just almost realized that, look, we have to start spreading the ball around a little more so we can start getting some points, the kind of points we should be getting. Um, the pass play was actually very simple. Mitchell went in motion. The D-back followed him. Mitchell just ran right by him. Uh, by that time, the D-back was out of position, and Galliano lofted it up. Easy touchdown for Mitchell. Now, of course, the Patriots didn't uh, let this game slip away. They did a good job themselves on their, their ensuing possession, drove the ball downfield, uh, converted several times on fourth down to keep their drive alive, and they punched the ball into the end zone on a 14-yard run at 9.32 remaining in the ball game. Brad Bernhardt. But then uh, what we thought might have been a key play at the time, Brahe Mitchell blocks the extra point. Well, that's for sure. That, that touchdown by Central Bucks East showed their most effective play of the night, and that was Bernhardt off the left side, uh, just taking the ball very shallow in the backfield and a quick hitter. He gained eight, nine yards, that time 14, and clean into the end zone. Uh, but Mitchell, again, showed the Narstown quickness, the dominance that Narstown can have on defense and special teams. Um, Mitchell came off the end real hard with a little bit of confusion from the East players, uh, buried that ball right in the stomach. We thought it would be maybe big. And at that point, it was 14-6 to Narstown with nine minutes to play. Certainly plenty of time in the ball game. But the Eagles doing a fine job and really putting this game away with just over four minutes to go when Damon Carroll blasted it in on a five-yard run. Although they missed the point after touchdown, the Eagles were comfortably up on top 20-6 to at that point, and that's where we wound up. Yeah, well, the Eagles had, uh, at that point had, had sort of swung the field position into their favor. Uh, they had real good position to start that drive, and it was an, an easy touchdown for Carroll. And Walt, a good, solid game by, uh, by Roger Grove and his Eagles. They now improve their record to 3-1 and one in league play. And next week, they've got a real test away against Council Rock. Well, last year, Northtown lost to some teams like this, like Central Bucks East. I believe they lost to Abington. Um, really couldn't keep that intensity that they had, say, in their first win against the Bucks of Central Bucks West. Uh, this year, they're not showing that at all. They're really blowing away the teams that they should be blowing away. Uh, next week is the real test. We saw that the West players, as good as Northtown was, West is just a little better than Northtown is. Obviously, in the Chamonix, Ben Salem, and Central Bucks East, the two teams they've played in the previous three weeks, um, are not as good as Narstown. They're running into a real good Pensbury team and a real good Council Rock team, and that's going to decide the upper standings of this conference. Folks, we hope you'll stay with us for the two remaining home games. We will be here for the game on October 14th against a, a Truman squad that has not been very successful this year, but then always dangerous Abington will be in on a Saturday afternoon game on October the 29th. And Abington's already got the big upset this year. They upset one of those uh, Council Rock teams that was one of the favorites. Actually, it was Pensbury that they beat. Pensbury's beaten Council Rock uh, just recently. So they can certainly upset one of the big boys in this conference and uh, become a factor. Folks, we hope you'll join uh, the team and, and come out and support them here at Norristown's Roosevelt Field. A, uh, I, I guess the crowd did funnel in a little bit later in this game. I was a little tough on the fans early in the game, but uh, once they saw the rain was holding off, we did get a few more fans here on, on what was a spirit day, a Saturday, an odd Saturday night game that we play here. But it was nice because we got some of the other sports. We got field hockey. We got soccer out here on Roosevelt Field on a weekend to play some important games for them as well. 
Well, everybody works just as hard, whether they're playing football, soccer, field hockey, lacrosse, no matter what they're playing, everybody's working just as hard. And it's nice to play in the stadium atmosphere. Maybe I'm sure they didn't have uh, as large a crowd as we even did for the football game tonight. But it's nice to play in that kind of atmosphere when people can come and see you who may not get a chance otherwise. Folks, again, we want to thank you for joining us. We want to thank the Norristown Area School District for bringing you this ball game. Of course, Tony Koya, our producer and director, who did a great job as always, and his student assistants, Barbara Slyker and Becky Hins. For Walt Fry, I'm Jeff Brandon. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time here on the Norristown Area High School Cable Access Channel.